Welcome back to this ongoing series of video tutorials looking at the interactive software Clint. In workshop one I gave you a brief introduction of Clint and we looked at creating what I called a title screen. So that was a screen that contained uh, an image in the background, two pieces of text and two buttons. From that title screen you could then kind of choose your path into the documentary. You could either click on a button to go into the instructions and read what the documentary was about, or click on the begin button and actually start your journey through the interactive documentary. What we're gonna do in this workshop is we're gonna to add to that one sequence we've created by adding an intro video, so a video that plays before the title screen, and we're gonna add our instructions. So we had the button for the instructions, but we didn't actually have the instructions in workshop one. And if you wanna have a go at actually creating the example that I'm doing in this tutorial, you can find links to the files in the description below. Okay, so let's get started. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna find my project here, Bin Appetit, it's what we called it in workshop one, and I'm gonna click on the edit button. So let's open it up. When it opens up, we come into the storyboard editor and we can see that one sequence we created in workshop one, title screen. If I double click into it, I open the sequence editor and on the screen at the moment, if I hide my media library, we can see what we added to this background image. We had two pieces of text, a title and a tagline, and then two buttons, begin and instructions. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a page for our instructions. So I need to create a new sequence to do that. To create a new sequence, what I'm gonna do is go back to my storyboard, and I'm gonna click on this little plus down here in our storyboard. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this little plus in the bottom left hand corner of our storyboard. And you can see if I hover my mouse over it, it says add new sequence. Okay, so let's click on it. We add the new sequence. I'm gonna drag it down here underneath our title screen. So when you're working in Clint, one of the things you're gonna to wanna to think about is how you lay out your storyboard. And I'm gonna show you today how you can color your sequences and your transitions to make them stand out and make it easier to see the path through your interactive documentary. So here I have my sequence one. I'm gonna place it underneath my title screen for now. First thing I'm gonna do is rename it. So currently it's called sequence one. I'm gonna call it instructions. Let's label everything so we know exactly what they are. I'm gonna change its duration. By default it's 30 seconds. I want it to be two minutes. I'm gonna change that to be two minutes. And then the final thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my background. So my background's black and currently the opacity is 100. I'm gonna nudge that down to be 50. And I'll explain why I've done that later when you see what we do with these instructions and hopefully it will make sense. Okay, so next thing I'm gonna do, double click on my instructions. Again, we're going into the sequence editor. Currently we have nothing in our sequence apart from this gray looking background. So again, this background's not actually gray, it's black at 50% opacity. So what I need to do now is add my instructions. And what I'm looking for from my instructions is a piece of text to pop up over that title screen that we've already created. And we're gonna do that by doing something called an overlay. And the first thing we're gonna to need to do is actually design how my instructions are gonna look. So I want my instructions to be a piece of text sitting in a black box, basically. Nothing too complicated, quite simple. Okay, and the first thing I need to do is add this black box to the screen. Now, adding shapes isn't always straightforward in Clint, unless you know how to do it. If we go to our media library over here, we don't have a section for shapes. But what we do have are buttons, and under buttons, we have this option called hotspot. If I drag that into my canvas, what it creates is a red square. And this red square is basically designed to be a clickable area. We don't have to have it clickable. So in our case, we just want it to be a background for our text. And that's exactly what we're gonna do with it. So I said I wanted to have it black, so the first thing I need to do is change it from being red to black. And if I go over into my inspector on the right-hand side and click on my styles tab, you can see I've got background color currently set to red. I'm gonna change that to black. And for this, I'm gonna nudge the opacity down a little bit. I'm gonna nudge it down to 80. And the whole opacity thing should hopefully make sense once we actually preview our project. Okay, so here's our square. I'm gonna make this bigger. It's gonna contain quite a bit of text. So I need it to take up a fair amount of my screen. Okay. I'm gonna add a border to it. So over here under styles, 
got border and border radius. I'm going to use that same yellow that we used in workshop one. Uh, I'm going to set the size to be three and I want to have rounded corners. So on my radius, I'm going to set this to be 10. And that should, as you can see up here, give me slightly rounded corners. You can kind of set this radius to be what you want. If I go 50, that's quite rounded. But I'm just going to have slightly rounded corners. Next thing I need to do is position my box on the screen. So I'm going to click on my general tab. And just like we did in workshop one, we're going to go to the responsive settings. So I'm going to click this little plus here. And as you can see at the moment, I've got a fixed size element that's locked 54 pixels from the top of the screen and 73 pixels from the left. I want this text box to be directly in the center of the screen. So what I'm going to do, untick that box that's locking it to the left hand side and untick that box that's locking it to the top. So now using center X and center Y, if I set these both to be zero, what that does is position my box directly in the center of the screen and it will always stay in the center of the screen. And actually I'm going to change this box from being fixed size to proportional. So I want it to change when my browser window changes size. And again, we'll look at that when we preview our project in a minute. Okay, so there's my box on the screen. Now what I need to do is add my text. So these are my instructions that are popping up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get a bit of text. Let's go for title three and drag that onto my canvas. Okay, I'm gonna double click to edit and this is gonna be our title and our title should obviously say instructions. I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna center align it. I'm gonna pick my Latto font that I've been using. I'm gonna make it bold and I'm gonna change the color to be that same yellow that we've been using. Let's click OK. I'm gonna make this text box smaller and then I'm gonna position it on my screen. And again, with every element you're positioning on the screen, you need to be thinking about your responsive settings. So at the moment, this piece of text is locked to the top of my screen, to the right-hand side and to the left-hand side. So I'm gonna untick all three of these, because again, with my box, it's been center aligned, so we're locking it to the center. So we're gonna try and do something similar with the instructions. And you can see my center X is already set to zero. I could change my center Y to be zero, but look what happens when I do that. Again, it's directly in the center of the screen, and that's not gonna leave me any space to actually put my instructions on. I want it to be at the top of this box. So you can even move it freehand or you can type in minus figures into center Y. So let's go for a minus 150 and see where it goes. Okay, too high. Again, like I said in workshop one, when you're positioning things, it's often trial and error. So I want it to go lower. So let's make this number a bit lower. Let's try 130. Okay, so minus 130 looks good. Again, I'm just gonna make this box a little smaller. And actually what I want to do, just like my box, I want to make my text proportional size. Now we need to add our body text. So let's go into text, let's grab our paragraph, and let's drag that onto the canvas. So again, I've got my double click to edit here. So I'm going to double click in. So I need my instructions. And what I don't want is you to have to watch me slowly type out my instructions in here. So what I've done, I've prepared a Google document that's got my instructions in. Don't need to take this title here because we've already got that. Um, on our sequence, I'm just going to take these three paragraphs of text here. I'm going to copy them, go back into Clint, and then just paste them in here. And again, you want to think about the font, the color, the size. So I'm going to use Latto once again. Let's go for size 14. Again, this might be a little bit of trial and error to see if it fits and it looks nice. And I'm going to click OK. So at the moment, I've got this scroll bar. I don't want this scroll bar. I want all the text to be seen on the screen. So I'm going to make my text box bigger. First, I make it wider and then deeper. And again, just like my box and just like my title, I want this element to have a proportional size so it changes. So I'm going to tick on proportional size. So I'd say that looks quite good. 
The size I chose actually means the text fits on the screen quite nicely. I'm going to lock this to the centre, so let's untick the boxes that were locking it to the top and left hand side. Let's make centre X zero. And then centre Y, again, you can choose where you want it to be positioned. I think 27 actually looks fine. Okay, so I'm going to save my project at this point. I'm going to click on save and I'm going to go back to my storyboard. So currently we have our title screen and we have our instructions. But at the moment, these two sequences aren't actually linked. We have a button in our title screen to go to our instructions, but we haven't done anything to link them together. So that's what we're going to do now. So again, I'm going to double click on my title screen to open that sequence up. And I'm going to click on my instructions button. So once you've added a button, when you want to link it, you just select it and you go over into your inspector over here and you click on the link tab. And under link, you have this go to drop down. And if I click on this drop down, you can see I've got sequence, so we can link to another sequence, widget. I'll show you what widgets are in another workshop. They're basically related to what you see in your footer. And you can also link out to a web link. So if you want to go to an external website, you can have a link for that. But obviously we've created a sequence of our instructions in, so we're going to click on sequence. And then we need to find the sequence we want to link to. So sequence, instructions. And the final thing I'm going to do is click on this overlay button. Okay, and you'll see what that overlay does in a minute. Actually, let's untick that for now and we'll see what happens without the overlay. What you can also do when you're adding a link, you can add a tooltip. So a tooltip is basically a piece of text that pops up over the element when you put your mouse over it. So if we wanted to, under tooltip here, we can have a piece of text that pops up that says, read the instructions. But because that button already has the word instructions on it, I don't think we need a tooltip. I think it's kind of spelled out for you already. And you can also pick the transition. So how do you want our sequences to transition into one another? So I'm going to click on none. I don't want there to be any transition. I just want it to pop onto the screen really quickly. But like I say, at the moment I've unticked this overlay box. I ticked it and then I unticked it. And that's because I'm going to come back to it in a minute and show you how it works. Let's go back to our storyboard. And you should be able to see we've now got a black arrow linking our title screen to our instructions. And if we go file, run, run project, our browser window opens and we can see our title screen. And now if I go to instructions and I click on it, you can see that takes us to the sequence we've just created. Okay, and in here we have our instructions. But like I say, what I really wanted this text to do is pop up over this screen, over this title screen. So to be a little window that actually opens over this screen instead of going to a new sequence. And that's basically what the overlay sequence is all about. It means you can get one sequence to load on top of another sequence. And this overlay option will actually be really handy and clean. It will just give you some extra options in terms of design and interactivity. Okay, so let's have a look to see how it works. So I'm going to go back into Clint. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my transition down here. And you should be able to see, go to sequence, go to instructions. So I don't have to go back into my title screen sequence to change this link. I can actually just do it by selecting the arrow down here. And what I'm going to do is tick on overlay. And now let's run our project to see how it looks. So run run project. Again, our title screen currently looks exactly the same as it did. But now when I click on instructions, let's see what happens to that sequence. Okay, so it's a subtle difference, but you should be able to see that in the background, I still have my image showing. So my title screen is still showing. And the reason it's still showing is because it's now an overlay and because I have the sequence that loads over the top of it with a background opacity of 50%. I could take that background opacity down to zero and it will really look like my instructions just pop up on top, but I like it kind of fading out a little bit. I've got this close button in the top right hand corner and if I close it, it goes straight back to my title screen. Click on instructions again, there you see it load up.